Hi, welcome to Talking Books and Stuff, the program that talks all about books and writing and stuff. Here's your host, Dennis Rimmer. And welcome back once again. This is Talking Books and Writing and Stuff. Uh, Dennis Rimmer here with us from Victoria, B.C. on the line. Person I've known for since 1969. We won't say that out loud, but uh, haven't seen in years. (laughs) Jane Kennard from Victoria, B.C. Hey, how's the day treating you today? Hi, Dennis. So good to hear from you. Yeah, it's it's a long, long time since we've spoken this way. Right. Um, Victoria's gray and cloudy here today, but it's really spring has sprung, which is wonderful. All the bulbs are up and the trees are in bloom, which is so, so nice to see after this long, seems like it's been a long, long winter. It, it seemed to last two years or so, didn't it? Didn't it? The winter that lasted two years, so true. Yep. Yes. <clears throat> so with us, the reason Jane is with us is not just because we like to reminisce, but also because I have in my hand something to hold, which is a book. It's put together by Jane Kennard. She describes herself, Jane, you say you're a, a spirit guide. So, okay, what is a spirit guide? Well, I'm not a spirit guide, but I speak with spirit guides. They are beings or what you might call an angel, an entity, a, a soul that is in spirit that uh, guides you and helps you. And I've talked to mine my entire life. And for years I've <clears throat> done readings where I would talk to other people's guides and tell them what they were saying. And then it evolved into me channeling, which I don't know if you know what channeling is, but that's where you allow the being, the guide to speak through you to people. And now I've um, put it in a book. And the book is something to hold. That title means something to you, doesn't it? Why that title? Well, I wanted to have some way of explaining that I want to give everybody a little understanding. I want to hold everybody's hand, to be honest. But I years ago, my little niece was so upset. She We had these new kittens, and everybody had a kitten to hold and she didn't have one to hold and she came in so tearful and saying I have nothing to hold and it was such a oh such a sweet way she said it and it stayed with me my whole life and I thought you know everybody needs something to hold sometimes sometimes we just need that you know that part of you touched so I thought I asked my guides what would be a good thing for me to do to give people the hope to help them find their spirit guides that are with them and they said something to hold give them something to hold and that is what this little book is about hopefully they will find within it a way that they can start creating a relationship with their guides there's space in it for them to write down notes to themselves anyway that's why i called it something to hold That's a good story. And you say, though, that you've kind of had this all your life and figured everyone else did, too? I did. I thought, I remember one time saying to my mom, you you know that that balloon that's above everybody's head, you know, because I could see it in school. I could see their thoughts. And she looked at me like, what? What are you talking about? (laughs) And then I started realizing other people weren't seeing the words and hearing the words from their guides. And then I started keeping it quiet, which I think most children do very much feel the the presence of their wonderful beings that are with them. But after a while, it's not totally accepted in our world, which I want to change. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> yeah, that's uh, that. It's been with me forever. I I can't imagine not hearing my guides talk to me. So this gift, I'll call it, is it a blessing or a curse? <laughs> a little of both, I guess. <laughs> And can any of us access our guides? Yes, that's what this book is about. <clears throat> I wanted to help. For years I did readings, and then I realized that I was only helping a very small amount of people. And as you know, we get older, we don't have the energy to do four-hour readings. And 
I also was feeling I was missing a whole lot of my life. So I needed to actually find a way in which to help more people. So I put together this little, it's really simple. It's not a big complex theory. It's not a religion. It's not a, um, <clears throat> it's simply a few steps to get in touch with your being in order to get in touch with your spirit beings that are with you. And everybody can do this. And everybody, and everyone has this guide? Absolutely everybody has a guide. Always one. You may have more if you're going through a difficult time. I do believe they can call in extra help if you need it. <laughs> but you always have one that's with you. So there's like a, a guide and then a, a farm team. I'm just kidding. Um, a, a... <laughs> you can kid about this. It is true. There are times when I will have many. <laughs> <laughs> How can you tell that you're getting a message as opposed to just a random thought or, a, well, maybe I should do this or maybe I shouldn't do this or what should I do today? Well, well, you truly have to take some time to know your own inner voice, your own outer voice, you to know your body, how it feels in certain situations. And when you ask a question... And, you know, it doesn't happen instantly sometimes. Sometimes it takes quite a while to get an answer back. But you will get, it will either be presented to you in some unusual way. Or you may actually start to, when you ask the question, you might get a, a rush feeling, a prickling of your skin. You might get a, a, a symbol brought to you as a, a, an affirmative symbol. Some people find dimes. Some people see butterflies. Like the, the, the book kind of explains some steps to go through about really being in touch with who you are before you can be in touch with who they are. And then they will help you be more in touch with who you are. And so it's a guide. The book is a guide to find the guides, basically. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what I should have called it. A guide to guide. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's good. So, of course, you've met skeptics all your life, starting with your mother. Uh, how do you deal with that? <laughs> Well, because I've had it my entire life, it really doesn't bother me anymore. <laughs> you know, it, it, I've been saved by so many people that needed to feel that they needed to come and save me. But um, I think I've had a very wonderful life. I truly believe I don't think I've hurt anybody. <laughs> and I, I have helped a lot of people. I truly believe that. Well, that's good. That's what we're here for, to help others, I think, rather than ourselves. Um, you talk about rituals in the book. Uh, so why <laughs> rituals? Is that, it's, was, is that a routine different from a ritual? No, they're basically one and the same thing. Um, the human being seems to feel great comfort in things that are repeated over and over again. We seem to feel more relaxed. We open up more. Um, so create, I'm not a ritual person. I've never had a plan in my life, but anyway, um, some people feel comfortable with that. They will make themselves a little altar of flowers or stones or things that have meant things. Something that is very positive for you. You create or do a meditation that makes you feel really comfortable. Do something in order to um, create a communication with your guides. It's just basically what it is, is getting you to relax and to be open and to create an opening, an, an avenue in which they can speak to you and you can speak to them. Well, actually, you can always speak to them, but you don't always hear what they're saying to you. <laughs> it's, so rich, it's like a routine, uh, but not necessarily a superstition. No, no, it's not a superstition. It's not a, it's not a um, belief system. It's not a religion. Oh, gosh, our world has so much of that. that. That is one reason why I wanted this to be very simple. It's just as easy and as wonderful as breathing. It's just what I call being with a capital B. It's seeing your world with the intensity of real sight, not just bits and pieces, but really being aware of your world around you. It's hearing everything, not just what is noisy, but also hearing the tone of people's voices, how they're feeling, how the, a bird is singing. Like, you know what I mean? Just really being present. In the moment. Yes, in the moment. And you always, you talk about affirmations as well. So what is that? Is that, that's not just positive thinking, is it? Yes. 
Huh? It is positive thinking. Whoa. Whoa. It is positive thinking. An affirmation is a positive thought. An affirmation is, uh, oh, let's see, uh, I, I get up every morning saying, thank you, or I love this world. Uh, an affirmation is, I will, everybody I greet today, I will greet with a smile. I know that's been difficult with masks, but <laughs> you know what? We're starting to take those off. And, you know, I think it's really going to help people. There's a lot of negativity out there right now. So I think when we take off these masks and smile again, we'll help each other. Affirmations is just taking something and making it yours. And have you met others who have this uh, this uh, quality <laughs> as well? Um. Well, lots of people around me are all very intuitive. Absolutely. Absolutely. Good. You see, I just assume you are. I do not question it. In my opinion, you are already a very evolved being, and you will just work out your way of communicating with your guides. And everyone around me is that way. And maybe they don't like me to remind them that you've got that, you know, because you trusted in it. But that is what happens. You trust. You start trusting in it. I see. Now, I'm thinking that it's like um, a question comes up and the first answer is usually the best one. And usually I ignore the first answer that comes up and I go with the wrong choice. So I should start listening to my first answer. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> it sounds like you should. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> Well, but you're, when you get that answer, it should feel right in the center. You know how when you hear something and it hits you to the very core of your being, that you because I, guides tell me that we do know right and wrong. We know it. We've evolved to a place in which we do know it, and your whole body knows it. And when you ask a question and get the answer, your whole being will feel, and this is the right answer, and your whole being will feel, being will feel that this is the wrong answer too. So, yes, listening to your inner self, which could be the voice of the guide, or well, what else would it be, right? We don't always have answers, but then suddenly we think about something, and then the choice becomes clear. So, I hear what you're getting at. We're talking with Jane Kennard, rather. I can't even say it after all these years. Something to hold is the book, Jane Kennard. Now, you also have a podcast, which I didn't know about. Tell us about that. Yes, our website. We've done a few podcasts. We're going to do even more. Um, it seems to be the medium that people want to hear now, that want to see it actually hear the words and almost feel like you're present with us. And the website is? janecanard.org or info at janecanard.org. That's info at janecanard.org, J-A-N-E-K-E-N-N-A-R-D, uh, janecanard.org. And uh, obviously you use the, the website to get the book, am I right? That's right. Yay, <laughs> I got one right. Yay. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what? Tell us. Let's go back a bit. And what's your daily routine? Do you have a daily routine, or do things just happen as they happen in your life? Yeah, basically things just unfold as they're meant to. You know, you have your daily routine as everybody does, and greeting yourself in the morning. And I, I really am a very happy person. I. <laughs> I, I'm very thankful that I wake up in the morning, and I'm very thankful that I get to snuggle into bed at night. I, I, I've never been a planner for a whole lot of things. I really believe life unfolds, it, but I do have a vision of what life should be like. I, I have a vision of loving people, of being with people. I don't necessarily have a list of how it should be. I know that in life, the most important thing is to be able to be flexible, to bend, to know that if something else is presented that I need to put attention to it. Um, I don't do channeled readings anymore, but I am I do a meditation every morning where I talk with my guide and I usually then tell Clark and Kirsten what has been said and sometimes I write it down. Right now I'm writing down a lot of other things. I have another little thing I'm going to put out in a bit. I don't want, you know, everything has been written. And, and just you present it in the way that maybe this time some people will hear it. I got you. 
And again, that's mm-hmm. www.janecanard.org. The book is something to hold. But there's also a quote I picked out of the book, You Are Not Alone. Um, and what are you meaning by that one? You're not alone. You have a beautiful, amazing being with you, a guide. The sole purpose is to take care of you. Now, getting a bit personal here, if we can do that, uh, a little while back, uh, we were heading west in our truck with our dog and two cats, and all of a sudden hit a patch of ice. The next thing you knew, we were halfway upside down in a ditch. Yeah. Why did we survive and not, 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 not survive? I guess is what is. Is it just blind luck or what? No, I don't. Well, I do, there is a certain element of luck in what, is, what guys would call chance. When there's a, a great amount of energy, certain con- chance can be created, which I guess you could call luck. Uh, I don't believe a car accident was luck or chance. I think you probably needed to stop and take, maybe pay attention to something that was going on in your life. For some reason, there was an abrupt change, abrupt stop for you. Hopefully you were all all right and nobody was too terribly injured. But I bet it shook you to your core. Uh, Yes, and we're still processing it. That was about a month ago, so... Oh, not that long ago. No, and I don't usually like to put dated things on this this podcast, but yeah, that's what happened. It's just, uh, yeah, we did come to a sudden stop in more ways than one. So, And the dog and the cat survived. They thought it was just kind of like another adventure, but uh, that's life. Were you, were, were you, see, this is what I would take with that. I would, I would question uh, where I was going what the purpose of the going was about, and perhaps I needed to rethink something in that. If it was such an abrupt stop, like that's a serious stop. Like there's one thing in just kind of getting a phone call from somebody that you sort of were thinking about, but being absolutely stopped in your tracks, I'd say there's some reason they want you to just really stop, take a look at what's going on, and maybe there's a different choice at hand that you need to take. Could be. We'll uh, hold on to that thought and we'll tell everyone to look up janecanard.org for the book <laughs> called Something to Hold. And uh, maybe you, dear listener, will uh, learn something, as have I. i got to wrap it up, Jane. Uh, thank you very much for your time today. Thank you, Dennis. Light and love all around you. I really have enjoyed this. Thank you. Thank you for visiting with us today. This is Talking Books and Stuff with Dennis Rimmer. Contact him at dennis at talkingbooks.tk. Thank you, and may all the good news be yours. Oh, and don't forget to check out his book, The Great Canadian Notebook, available across Canada and at amazon.ca. Oh, oh, oh.